Hey guys, this is Nathan. I'm here to show you how to get a tool chain working to build a CH5 project from zero to a simple button. Uh, so we're going to start at Node.js. We're going to download the long-term support version. While that's downloading, we're going to go to code.visualstudio.com. We're going to start that download as well. A couple things. So Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that allows you to run JavaScript, JavaScript code on your computer without a browser. Uh, it also includes a package called the Node Package Manager. Uh, we're going to use that to install a couple things, the first being the Angular CLI and the second being the CH5 Utilities CLI. So we're going to cruise through the defaults for Node.js, getting this thing installed. It's pretty straightforward. And now that that's done, we're going to minimize Chrome, we're going to open up the installer for Visual Studio Code, and we're going to continue through this. Uh, Visual Studio Code, it's important to note, is not Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is built for uh, HTML editing, um, other language editing, but it is not full-blown C-sharp Visual Studio. So that's going to install. We're going to uncheck the button to launch it, we're going to run it as administrator instead. Once that opens up, we're going to head to the extensions on the left. We're going to search for Crestron. We're going to find the Crestron components and start those installing. After those start, we're going to open up a terminal window from the terminal menu at the top, and we're going to set an execution policy to allow remote signed code. Once that starts, we're going to do some installations with the NPM program I mentioned earlier. The first is the Angular CLI. If you note the dash G there, that means we're actually going to install Angular globally for the system. There are a lot of really good extensions from Visual Studio Code, such as things for Angular, HTML, CSS, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to cover those in this video. Next we're going to go through, we're going to install the CH5 Utilities uh, CLI from Crestron. And we're going to do that globally as well. After this is done, we're going to go through and we're going to create a new Angular project. We're going to do this by using the ng command and specify a new project. So we're typing ng space new space demo. The name of the project we're creating is called demo. We're not going to have Angular routing, and we're going to use SCSS as our style sheet templating system. So this is going to install here. I'm not going to go through this video and talk about HTML5. We're not going to talk about JavaScript. We're not going to talk about CSS or Angular. Really, this video is aimed at a very quick start, less than 12 minutes, to get a single button on a touch panel with CH5 talking to a control system and what, what it takes to get that tool chain put together. There are lots of great resources to learn Angular and HTML5 and CSS and all that stuff. Uh, I've done some great courses on Udemy, and the one I've been going to most lately is a smaller site called Fireship.io. They have a number of short videos that teach uh, Angular, as well as Firebase, and some other libraries in quick little bits, and it's easy to kind of parse through. So now that that's done, we're going to go up to the file menu, go to open folder, we're going to browse for our project folder. There's the demo folder, we select it. That's opening the workspace to our folder. So you can see all the files on the left inside our folder there. We're going to open up a new terminal window, and we're going to start adding some components to our Angular project. So the first one we're going to add is the Crestron CH5 CRCOM library. And while that's installing, 
we're going to go to our angular.json file and we're going to add the reference to that crcom library. So we're going to reference it from the node modules folder, crestron slash ch5 crcom lib, and then the actual crcom lib javascript file. And then we're going to copy and paste this line and we're actually going to put it in this file twice because Angular has a concept of having different options for testing builds versus production builds. And for the case of this demo, they're going to be the same. So we've got that pasted in there twice, one for each section. Now we're going to do our CH5 theme next. So very similar process. We're going to add at Crestron slash CH5 dash theme. And while that's being added, we're going to go to our styles directive and we're going to add a reference to that style sheet as well. I'm going to use the light theme here. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it down below just like we did before. Next, we're going to go to our tsconfig.json file, and we're actually going to have to change the build target type from uh, ES2015 to ES5. We're going to save that, and then at the terminal at the bottom, we're going to type ng space serve. So what this is going to do, this is taking the TypeScript files for Angular, and it's compiling them to their respective HTML and JavaScript and CSS. And then it's going to actually serve them to us on a web server local to our system. Uh, this web server won't connect to a control system locally, but there are ways to do control system emulation so that you can test your panel on your computer before you have to load it to actual physical hardware. So this is going through and compiling. And you're going to see here in a second, it's going, to, it's going to post that it's running on a local host. Right there. So local host on port 4200. We're going to go to Chrome. We're going to type in local host on port 4200. And you'll see our Angular project is running. So this is being served from uh, Angular itself. So first we're going to go and modify our code. We're going to delete the base href from our index.html file. We'll close that. Next we're going to go to the app module.ts file. We're going to add a provider and it's going to provide back that app uh, base href. Notice when I click on the autocomplete here, it adds it up above as our import, which is very helpful. Next, we're going to add a custom element schema. And notice that added to the import up above for Angular Core as well. Then we're going to go to our app component.html. We're going to delete everything that's in this file, and we're going to start adding our button. So we add a CH5 button, we tell it to be a shape, we're going to make this a rounded rectangle. Then I want this button to press on join 21 when I press the button, so I use the send event on click. And I want feedback from join 21 as well, so I use the receive state selected for 21. Finally I set the label to what I want the button to say, so that's demo, and I close my tag. And that, and that auto-completes the CH5 button tag as well. So you can see the button in the browser. We're going to kill the, the ng serve by hitting control C. And then we're going to build the project with, ang with Angular. So we're going to send ng space build. And we're going to tell it we want a production build by using the prod flag. So dash dash prod. So what that's going to do is it's going to compile everything down. It's going to make it as small as it can. And it's going to prepare it to be sent to production.
some other useful resources when checking out the CH5 stuff, I definitely recommend looking at the uh, sample projects that Crestrun has provided. There's a lot of really great stuff there. Additionally, uh, check out the API documentation. So crestrun.com slash developers and going to navigating to the CH5 section. So that completed. Now we're going to use the ch5 cli command. We're going to archive our project. We're specifying the name that we want it to be. We're specifying the output and we're specifying where we want it stored. So this is actually creating the ch5z file that you would load to a panel. Then similarly we can use the ch5 cli with the de with the deploy command, the dash -h to specify a host name or IP address and then the type as a touch panel, and the output as well. Uh, my touch panel was actually offline when I sent that command, so you'll see the frame skip here just in a second as I went, I paused it and got it turned back on, and then resumed recording. So there you can see it, it's sending the command now. It connects to the panel, it loads it, it then sends the command, and the panel is going to load that project. So now you have a single button on that panel that says demo, ready to connect to a control system.